Hey, good afternoon. How y'all doing? It is Well Red Beard, and it is a damn fine day to talk about a book. We're here for Beard on King. This is episode 22, and we're going to talk about End of Watch, the final book in the Bill Hodges trilogy, the first two being Mr. Mercedes and Finders Keepers. Um, I didn't love this one. Um, I am at two stars. It was just okay for me. Now, it's my least favorite book in the three book series, uh, and uh, Finders Keepers is my favorite. Mr. Mercedes is number two, and I think I was, I think I was four stars on Finders Keepers, three stars on Mr. Mercedes, and I'm now two stars on End of Watch. Um, for me, um, I, I've said this multiple times through different videos as I've, you know, reviewed these books as well as uh, done some content on the um, the series, the Mr. Mercedes uh, TV series. Um, and um, I, I've said that I, I didn't really need another Brady Hartsfield story. I mean, I get it at the end of Mr. Mercedes. He's not dead. He is, you know, you know, head injury. He has a head injury beaten severely, um, um, by Holly Gibney and, um, left in a hospital bed, you know, basically in a vegetative state. And, and I really didn't need, um, him to come back. I, I mean, I, I would have liked if we, um, maybe resurrected another, case from Hodges' past, uh, maybe, uh, you know, went somewhere else altogether. I think that's kind of uh, what I wanted. Um, because we we do get completely away from, I mean, Hartsfield is always, an, a, a, you know, on the back burner. He, you know, he's still um, alive in that hospital bed. Hodges is still going to check on him, going to visit him. Um, but you know, in finders keepers, we don't really, you know, we go somewhere else and I kind of wanted to go somewhere else, uh, with this one, but we do not. So, um, that's one thing I didn't like about it. The, the other thing is, is that, you know, book one and two are, you know, straight forward crime books. Um, if you don't know anything about it, Bill Hodges is a retired, um, police detective, um, and, um, and, you know, he's kind of, um, an alcoholic, overweight, uh, man, kind of just, uh, you know, lazy boying it through his, uh, his retirement. I mean, basically waiting around to die as, uh, Towns Van Zandt said. Uh, so, um, you know, and, and then he gets, a an email, right? He gets a, a letter, not an email. He gets a letter from, uh, the Mercedes killer and it kind of brings him out of his funk and and uh, back into action um, and then at the tail end of that book he kind of starts a uh, like a private investigative service with Holly um, so that's kind of the setup that's that's where we're at um, so Brady's still in the hospital um, you know there's a doctor that's been doing some uh, you know kind of un uh, approved um, uh, methods, medications, whatever on him. I mean, that, that's kind of the situation for me though, both book one and two were, were straight crime novels, uh, straight, uh, you know, um, I mean, intrigue and action, but, but there was straight crime. There was no, uh, supernatural or, you know, there was no power element to it. And then this, um, I mean, Brady has a power, you know, he has the ability to, um, take over other people's bodies, now, whether from the knock in the head or from the experimental medication. I don't really give a shit. I just didn't care for that. Like, I mean, this is Stephen King's world. He can do whatever he wants with it. But for me, um, if we've spent two books in, um, in what we think to be, I mean, I don't know. Look, I'm going to call this unrealistic. I, I don't know shit about, you know, this, I don't know shit about, the human mind and science and all, but I mean, uh, unrealistic is what I'm going to call it. When you, when you, when I spend two books in a world that I think is a realistic, you know, no monsters. I mean, other than the human variety, you know, no monsters, no special powers, no superheroes. Um, and then in the third book, it goes somewhere else. Like to me, that kind of, uh, was a turnoff. Um, so, I mean, I didn't care for, the abilities Brady had. I didn't really care for the technological, um, the technology aspects uh, of this story either. There's a uh, usage of these like antiquated game systems called Zappets uh, to um, hypnotize people and, and basically um, talk them into suicide. So, so from the comfort of his hospital bed, Brady is 
going after uh, people and getting them to commit suicide. There's there was a you know mysterious mysterious death of or suicide of a nurse there on the grounds of the hospital. Um, and you know Hodges is like hmm, like Hodges is all the time thinking that there's more to what he's seeing you know from Brady, but um, uh. <sighs> Yeah, and uh, so he, he's you know, and then he starts going after like survivors uh, of the the city city or the city center massacre, and so that kind of you know sets us up on this um, you know um, race to um, to track down who's doing this and why. And again, you know, at some point, I mean, I don't know, three quarters of the way through, um, I can't remember the exact details of it, but Brady dies. I mean, his body dies, but he's already in someone else's body. Um, so at the end, when we're, um, when we get to the culmination to the, uh, the climax of, you know, Bill Hodges and Holly Gibney and Jerome versus, um, uh, Brady Hartsfield, it's, um, I mean, it's not really Brady. It is Brady. I mean, it's totally Brady in the head, but it's not. Brady. It's not this young, you know, frail, um, criminal mastermind, uh, that we've, um, that we've, you know, come to know. I mean, he's in someone else's body, which to me just kind of, I don't know, took away from it, I guess. I mean, when you're, when you have a final showdown with that evil, um, villain, but they're not wearing the evil villain's face. I mean, something about that just, you know, kind of, I guess, turned me off. Um, so yeah, it was okay. I mean, I, 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 and there's a lot of stuff in the book that, that I do like. I mean, I, I do, I do like the Bill Hodges character. I like the Holly Gibney character a bit more. Now I've said, you know, um, I like the TV show version of her better than the, the book version. Um, you know, again, Brady still has, um, I, mean, I guess you don't really lose this, even if you've been slammed in the head and are in a hospital bed, but still has race, racial slur tendencies, which felt completely unnecessary to me. Um, and, uh, I mean, Jerome occasionally does his little thing that, that if you've watched the previous videos, you, you know that there were three major turnoffs for me in book one and, and two of them, um, you know, have persisted, um, on some level throughout all three books. Um, so, you know, one of the thing about this series is in book one, it felt like Stephen King was unafraid to kill people, like unafraid to kill major characters. And now it feels like, like, okay, don't get me wrong. The book's called end of watch. If you can't read that title and know that this is the third book in a series of third and last book in a series of, um, of an aging, you know, retired police detective, if, if that doesn't like kind of scream, um, what it screams, then, you know, but, uh, I'm talking about like, you know, side characters that are put in really dangerous situations. And in book one, it was like, you know, he wasn't afraid to kill him. And I'm really talking about, uh, Jane and I'm talking about, um, Hartsfield's mom in book one. Now, since then, there have been multiple occurrences, and I don't know if I mentioned it in Finders Keepers, but you know, at the tail end of Finders Keepers, something really severe happens to uh, um, to the kid's mom. Uh, I'm trying to trying to blank on Pete, Pete's mom, and um, and but she's she survives. In this one, something really severe happens to a couple of different characters, at least one. I may be off on when I say a couple, um, but they're they're okay. And I'm talking like, you know, it, you know, it, it, it comes to the end of the chapter the the thing has happened and that character slips off into darkness or, or that character, you know, saw no more or that I'm trying to think, I mean, I didn't really mark the spots, but you know, that character, um, you know, I mean, it, it really like, you know, really had those lines that said, Oh shit, they just died. They, they, they just died. And then you go to another chapter and then come back. And, and of course, they, they made it. I mean, in this case, you know, um, it, it, you know, it really felt like the whole Dukes of Hazard thing, right? Like when uh, you would clearly see them go off the cliff and there's two people in the car, you know, at the tail end of an episode. Then you'd come back the next week and it would show us that, oh, they actually bailed out before it went over the cliff. But, but, but no, there was two people in the car when it went over the cliff, you know. So um, it felt like that. It felt like, you know, just... Um, yeah, 
you know, killing people, but then not killing them. And um, again, it's it's King's world. He can do what he wants. But for me, I just kind of, it felt like, you know, after book one is, um, you know, we're not going to kill anybody. I mean, we're going to put people in really dangerous situations, but uh, if they're, if they're a main character, if they're related or if they're, lo- you know, if they're loved by someone, by one of these, you know, really main characters, then, then we're not going to actually put them underground. So, um, I don't know. Uh, for me, it was just two stars. Uh, not a huge fan uh, of it. Uh, I like the series overall as a whole. I guess the series overall would be three considering I was two, three, four on the three books. Um, but yeah, that's it. This is Well Read Beard. This has been Beard on King. Hope you liked it. I uh, hope you are enjoying all your books, all of them, as much as I am. If not, you're reading the wrong damn books.